Hello subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Waves from Slidenet here. In this video, we're gonna talk about parameterized constructors and constructor overloading. Now this would be just the concept behind these two things. And then in the next video, we're gonna work out a simple example that shows us exactly how these things work. In my previous video, I was talking about constructors in Java, how they work and what you can do with them. Here, let's dig a little more in detail and try to discuss something about constructor overloading. Now if you guys have seen my method overloading video, you know exactly what is coming. But otherwise, let's take a look over here and see exactly how constructor overloading works. But in any case, please go back and check the method overloading video because everything is the same in constructor overloading just like it was in method overloading. Here there's a class person, there's a string name, int age and string address. Now. Like we talked about a person, we talk about three things, name, age, address, and then I have a constructor here called person that takes three arguments, string n, int a, string address. That means someone who's going to call this constructor is going to have to pass values for these three things. And inside that I simply say name should be equal to n, age should be equal to a, and address should be equal to addr. Now in addition to this constructor, take a look right below there is another constructor called person it has the same name what we have above but this time it does not take any arguments so inside this what I'm saying is name is not applicable age is zero and address is not applicable I mean addition to these two constructors there is another constructor with the same name it takes string n or only one string as the argument as you guys if you guys notice name becomes equal to that n age is 0 address is null so this is constructor overloading there is the same name everywhere in different places but what changes is the type or number of arguments for each constructor which is just like method overloading so let's take a look what happens when I call something when I go to my main method and say person me equals to new person and I say vips 120 XYZ Java is going to be like, okay, the first argument vives is a string. The second argument 120 is an integer. The third argument xyz is a string. So which constructor exists that takes the first argument string, second argument integer, third argument string and it's going to call that constructor. This is how constructor overloading works. Now if I say person u equals to new person, Java is going to notice that there is no argument here. So it's going to try and find some constructor that has a no argument defined inside it. So here if you see this person, this has no arguments. Now remember one more thing, if you do not define this constructor with the zero argument, you are going to get an error at this step because there is no constructor that matches no arguments, right? Then if you say person him equals to new person Anki, at this time Java is going to be like okay we need a constructor which has one string argument. Who is that? It is this constructor and hence that will be executed. This is how constructor overloading works. So all the constructors in the class that you want to overload must have the same name. But what differs is either the number of parameters or the type of a parameter. For example you can have two constructors with both one parameter each but the first one may be an int the second one may be a double and that is how you distinguish between things in Java as far as constructor overloading is concerned now when you overload constructors there is a small issue let's talk about that there is a class person just like before it has string first name and string last name here it has a constructor that takes two string arguments f for the first name L for the last name and I simply say first name should be equal to F last name should be equals to L now notice carefully there is another constructor person which takes only string F in this case the first name is mr. space plus F which means if you pass Anki from your public static void main for this constructor it's gonna be mr. space Anki over here and last name is gonna be NA and if you guys notice something this is the weird problem the first name is not consistent in both the users which means if someone says person me equals to new person Bruce comma Wayne in that case 
this constructor will be called which has string F and string L. So first name becomes Bruce, the last name becomes Wayne. But if someone says person U equals to new person Bruce, in that case the first name becomes Mr. Space Bruce because the Bruce goes over here inside string F and that F is added to Mr. Space, right? So what we have is the first name is getting different values in both the places. That means if you go here and you're trying to see exactly what is going on, you will end up getting Bruce one time as the first name and Mr. Space Bruce the second time as the first name and that is inconsistent. So how do we fix this inconsistent constructor issue when you talk about overloading? Let's take a look at that. Consistent parameterized constructors. So very simple trick. Class person, string first name, string last name, the same thing. And then there's the main function. This time, I say person me equals new person, Bruce, comma, Wayne. So that goes inside string F and string L. First name becomes F, last name becomes L. But notice here, carefully, I have the other constructor, person, that only takes one argument, string F. And it has a weird statement written inside, which says this F, comma, and A. So what is going on? If you go down here and if you say person U equals a new person Bruce, what is going to happen is this Bruce gets passed over here to the second constructor string F and from here it goes inside this, right? This F comma NA. In other words, what you're trying to do is by saying this bracket F comma NA, you're actually calling the constructor above which takes the two arguments. In other words, you're trying to keep the first name value same no matter how many overloaded constructors you have. So what is the benefit of that? In this situation, you will not end up with the Mr. Space Bruce scenario just because you put different values in different constructors at the time of giving values to the variables. So we will be talking about the, this keyword in a lot more detail in the upcoming videos but for now remember this when I say this and put a parenthesis here I'm trying to call some constructor right here that takes these two arguments makes first name equals to F which is equals to this Bruce that was passed here and the last name becomes NA that you have here and this ensures that things stay consistent so in the next video we're gonna talk about how to run this out on NetBeans and try to see if we can fix the issue that we talked about the consistent constructors if you're a bit confused about this don't worry too much about it when we work on example you guys will exactly understand what is going on in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day thanks for watching